How does the brain process language? And what does this tell us about reading speed? Does this tell us anything about reading speed? I think it does. The brain is, um, this is a brain. We all have brains. We're not really sure how they work. Uh, but this is um, how the brain reads. So it starts off, the, the letters go into our eyes. And somewhere in the back of the brain, the uh, ventral occipital, os, the ventral occipitotemporal region. Somewhere, somewhere around here. Somewhere around here. This, this recognises the letters, and this is the same part of the brain that recognises faces, by the way. Um, and then this sends the um, letter information to another part of the brain, which kind of puts them together um, into sounds and into words. And this often causes confusion for people reading in English because um, English has a pretty strange system when it comes to words and letters and sounds. Um, and then from the sounds, we, we can access the meaning. So our brain is, is, our brain is wired for, for um, listening. So our brain has been listening to language for a very long time, at least tens of thousands of years probably hundreds of thousands of years, maybe even millions of years, our brain has been um, has been processing language by listening. Um, and um, reading, it's been working out more recently. So it needs to translate the letters into sounds and then the sounds into meanings, then it accesses the meanings. So um, the brain then um, needs to... Um, Oh, so yeah, so by the way, the, the, um, the B and D thing, which I may have talked about before, that when our brain looks at, um, looks at B, and, B and D, um, because our brain is using the face recognition software that we have installed, when it sees a B and D for the first time, it just kind of thinks, oh, this must be, um, this is just... This is just one of those that's the other, the other way around. They're just, we, I'm just looking at one. Like if you look at a face, if you look at my face from this side, then you look at my face from this side. Um, you don't think, oh no, that's a completely different person. You have to think, oh, that's the same person. It's just, this is from this side and this is from this side. Um, if you look at my face closely, you will realize that it's not completely symmetrical. And in fact... Um, I think very often in these videos, my face has been flipped. So in fact, this is the right side of my face and this is the left side of my face. And of course, if you're watching on a screen, the right... Anyway, the important point is um, B and D look like different sides of the same face. So when you start to read you confuse B and D, and it's very normal to confuse B and D. And as you learn to read English, you have to switch off the symmetry recognition function of your brain's face recognition software. Um, and once you've done that, you can then start to read English more quickly and more smoothly. Um, and those are, so those are, um, those are all the, uh, processes for that happening. Um, also, and by the way, the brain processes Chinese slightly differently to English. So if you're used to reading in Japanese, there may be different effects and your brain may have to relearn reading when you start to learn um, in English. So just to sum up how the brain works, um, the brain for the brain, reading is listening. The brain is not made for reading. Um, we need to convert language into sound inside our brains so that we can listen to it and understand it. Um, and the brain converts letters into sounds. It does this quickly and it does this in parallel. Um, it doesn't, we don't recognize, we don't recognize words. Um, in the same way that when you're reading in when you're reading Chinese or Japanese, uh, you recognise the kanji. Um, that doesn't really happen in English. 
to read in English, you need to recognize each letter, but you need to do it very quickly and all the letters need to go in in one go. Um, and B and D confusion is normal. So when we are processing language in our brain, because the brain is made to listen, we have a kind of loop. We have like a tape loop in our brain. So when we listen, we don't, it's not like a tape recorder. We don't record everything that we hear. We just have about two seconds worth of recording. So like a tape, I don't know whether you know um, those old tape recorders that you used to have on, on answer phones that would have like a tape loop. So there's like a, a two second tape loop in our brain, which is recording the sound that we hear. And then after two seconds, that's gone. So what happens then, our brain can hold about two seconds of language. So if you think about what you're reading, um, how many words can you read in two seconds? Uh, that would be your reading speed. Your reading speed is words per minute. A minute is 60 seconds. So if you divide your reading speed by, by 30, that's how many words you can read in two seconds. And how many ideas are there? How many words are there in an idea? So how long are the ideas? Um, because remember, when our brain is thinking, our brain thinks about ideas. Our brain needs ideas to think about when we're reading. So um, just for an example, this is from a page from a book that you may have read or you may read. And this is what we see on the page. Um, when we come to read this and get it into our ear, it needs to be something like this. It needs to be broken up into chunks of language that we can understand and not just a constant text. Not single words. Um, sometimes a single word is an idea. But sometimes two words or three words or more than three words, three or four words, um, and so on. So if we, if we look at different books, then um, different books have different lengths of ideas. So if you look at some children's books, there's a one page and there's a picture and there's one word. Then we turn the page over and there's the next word. Um, if we look at books that get more difficult... Um, the ideas become longer. So we get longer stretches of words. Uh, books written for native speakers, uh, and in fact speech, when you're listening to native speakers speak, um, each idea is something like seven words long. So we need to get these ideas within two seconds. And if we don't, if we're trying to if we're trying to read a book where the ideas are seven words long, if we can only read three words per every two seconds, then by the time we get to the end of the seven words, we've forgotten what the first words were. So we need to go back and read again the beginning of the the beginning of the idea. Um, so these these are the speeds that you need to read at if you're reading if you're reading a book of that level. So if you if your reading speed is only 120 words per minute, then your book better not have any long ideas, because if some of the ideas in your book are more than four words long, um, you're going to get stuck and you're going to have to stop and go back and work out what you are reading. Um, so this is a bit of a this is a bit of a paradox, really. We, we imagine, oh, it's a difficult book, so I could only read it slowly. Um, but to read a difficult book, you have to read it quickly. Otherwise, you don't get the ideas. You lose the ideas. Um, so those are, um, those are just some ideas about reading speed. So we've looked at what your reading speed means. Um, we looked at, so we've looked at these different ideas. We've looked at the reading speed in terms of fluency, in terms of um, 
how fast, how many words you can read, how much time it will take, how much time you can spend reading. We've looked at Fry's three reading speeds. We've looked at four different reading styles. We've looked at Carver's five reading speeds. And we've just spent a little time thinking about the brain and how the brain processes language. Um, so, good luck. Read faster. Read better. That's all.